Hey guys, this is Dunk again. Uh, this time I'm talking about the uh, Stun Witch Doctor without any legacy gear. Uh, so all the items needed for that spec you can get in the current patch. There's uh, no real trick behind it, it's just that you need to, to have the appropriate gear and know something about the gameplay of that. Let's talk about the gear first, this is the most important part. This amulet, the Dover Energy Trap, is the bread and butter for the build. Without it, you cannot perma-stun a Rift Guardian properly because you need the secondary effect to a maximum of 25% increased stun duration. The first ring that you have to use is the Ring of Royal Grandeur because of the two sets uh, we are using and that we need. The second ring can be any ring with good stats, with uh, main stat, vitality and cooldown reduction. I use the Rogar's Huge Stone here because for a while I was also using the Molten Wild Beast Jizzard. The gems I use right now is the, are the Gogog of Swiftness, the Toxin Gem and the Esoteric Alteration for more toughness, especially against Electrified. The second build defining item after the Dover Energy Trap is the Tiklanian Visage. This is pretty much needed for any Witch Doctor in Greater Rifts right now. The braces I use are the Ancient Parthen Defenders, because they help you stay alive in high density situations where you cannot have everything under control. This happens quite often in Greater Rifts. Um, also, you don't pull or knock back anything, so uh, use, using the strong arm braces is a waste. Gloves are the St. Archie's Gauge for just more toughness. The belt in that spec is the Belt of Transcendence for all those fetishes that you can summon with this. The offhand is the Homunculus because you need those uh, zombie dogs every two seconds because without them you cannot stun reliably. And finally the weapon is as always the Star Metal Kukri for uh, the cooldown reduction on your big bad voodoo. The other item slots are filled with the Captain Crimson set and with the Born set, just for more cooldown reduction. Okay, let's talk about skills. First we have Haunt, because Haunt is used for the damage debuff and also for summoning the fetishes with the belt. We also use Sacrifice to stun uh, the Rift Guardian especially with the dogs. We also use Spirit Walk because this is such a powerful skill, we use it in whatever we do. Of course we use Summon Zombie Dogs, in this case the Chill uh, Rune for the damage debuff as well as the Dogs to stun. Horrify is there for the crowd control for everything before the Rift Guardian. And of course we have Big Bad Voodoo Slam Dance for more damage. The passives are um, Fierce Loyalty and Zombie Handler for one more dog and a bit more toughness, as well as Tribal Rights for the uh, cooldown reduction on the zombie dogs, and of course Spirit Vessel because we need that Cheat Death passive. Okay guys, let's talk about the gameplay of that spec and uh, the one very big weakness of it. And that weakness is Electrify, because we cannot use the Xephyrian Amulet. Um, if you watch uh, what I'm doing in this uh, small video here, um, we're fighting against an electrified pack with uh, nightmarish as well, um, and we still managed to do this pretty uh, nicely. And this is because I place those big bad voodoo's in front of me, and I try to stand behind them all the time because those big bad voodoo poles, or however you call them, they're blocking electrified. And this means that you cannot get damaged by that, and also you cannot uh, you cannot get feared. Because Electrified and Nightmarish combination or Electrified and Knockback combination, this is something that screws many runs in the higher levels because you cannot really defend against it unless uh, you have either the Crusader or the Voodoo Pole standing in front of you to block that, block that for you. Also keep in mind with the uh, Zombie Dogs to stun, you can also stun the Yellow Elites of course. and um, if the situation is bad, you need to stand far away and stun those dogs from uh, those those elites and champions from distance. So you don't have them in your fear aura, but you can perma stun them with the dogs. It works just like it works with the Rift Guardian. And this is what I'm exactly doing here in this um, next video. It's an easy Rift Guardian, of course, because Raziel is not doing much, even if you don't stun him. But <clears throat> as you can see there, he's perma stunned. And he has electrified, but that electrified is not damaging me. That's because our Crusader is standing in front of me, and I also plays the Voodoo Poles. 
Okay, but about that perma stun, that's something that uh, many people seem to have issues with um, because they don't know something about the mechanics of that um, crowd control reduction of the bosses. There's two parts to that. The first part is they have a fixed amount of crowd control duration reduction and they also have a relative reduction of the duration. That means like um, they have, for example, 0 0.5 seconds reduction on any stun effect that you apply on them. Additionally, uh, they are building up um, they are building up a resistance against stun if you stun them. So the more often you stun them, the more um, they build up the resistance against stun. And that means um, if you are um, if you're stunning them too often, they get pretty much immune to stun whatever you do. Um, because uh, if you have like three seconds stun duration and they have 0 0.5 seconds uh, duration reduction. Um, if they don't uh, have their um, crowd control reduction resistance uh, up, uh, they are stunned for 2.5 seconds. But whenever they reach something like uh, 80%, um, they're immune to it. So you need to find a rhythm. And that rhythm is like, basically, you have to stun the Rift Guardian every 0 0.9 seconds or something like that um, to have him in perma control. And if you can manage that with maximum uh, cooldown reduction, plus um, plus the right timing, and this is the difficult part, you can perma-stun almost any Rift Guardian. You can see, you will see this in this video later on, that I am also stunning other Rift Guardians that are uh, super, or people are thinking they are more difficult to stun. The thing is that you get two, you get a dog every two seconds, and um, yeah, you have to time that. Like, you see that you cannot stun because you have no dog anymore, and in that second you have to cast your summon zombie dogs, and uh, that's that requires training. You need to have training with this. You need to get a feeling for that. And here with the Infernal Maiden, it's also an easy uh, Rift Guardian to stun, but it's uh, it's... Yeah, you just have to look my Witch Doctor, how often I use that stun. It's not like I'm spamming it, like many people are doing it. They spam it, spam, 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 and then uh, the dogs are all gone, and then the Rift Guardian breaks free. That that cannot work. It doesn't work. Um, like this, if you are stunning like every 0 0.9 seconds, roughly, um, uh, then you can keep him in control, even with this spec, even though this is not a uh, legacy gear. Okay, I just show you some more um, videos with the other Rift Guardians and I speed up the fights. Okay, let's speed this up. Okay, in this run on uh, Greater Rift 68 we get Rhyme. He's not that easy to stun but it's working pretty well in that video. You will see this. You have seen in the Infernal Maiden fights uh, that the Infernal Maiden was teleporting once and this is usually happening when you do a human error. That spec is perfectly fine to stun the Rift Guardians permanently if you are fully focused and if you don't do a mistake. But really the hard thing is you need to train that a bit. You need to get the feeling uh, so that uh, you have a constant uh, applying of stun with the dogs. Okay, this is the rhyme fight. And as you have seen, Rhyme was kept in full control, and it's even enough to clear 68 and get some nice ranking with it. Okay, this time uh, we're fighting against Sandshaper, and Sandshaper, here in that video, he's casting the Tornadoes twice in the full fight. And if you fail a rift because Sandshaper is casting Tornadoes twice, then the run was not good at all, so it doesn't matter actually. The control is fine for that. Okay, in this run we are fighting against one of the uh, most ugly Rift Guardians because he has an attack that you cannot stop. 
And this Rift Guardian that we are fighting there is our very loved friend called Choker. The thing about Choker is that um, he's casting this Poison Nova every once in a while. And the Poison Nova is something that you cannot prevent. Even though he's, he's stunned, he's casting the Poison Nova. And this is, this is silly. Uh, but yeah, Blizzard likes it this, this way. I don't know why, but they like it this way. You can see in that run, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm already tired. I'm out of focus. I'm not focusing uh, because the Rift is already lost and so it doesn't matter at all. Um, and he's casting his poison stuff, like not the Nova, but the other things, like three or four times in the full fight. But it's still okay. If I focus completely, he is not able to do anything besides the poison Nova. And Choker is one of the hardest bosses to stun. And here's the last one, and this is an easy one. This is Hamelin. Um, it's very easy to stun him permanently, and there's nothing special to it. Just enjoy uh, the rest of that small and short fight. I hope you enjoyed the, the guide and gameplay tutorials, and see you next time. Goodbye.